Let's get more from uh, Washington. We have Uri Dadush, who's the former World Bank Director of International Trade. Now, Uri is now director at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, and he joins us this morning on the program. Uri, you say that this uh, trillion dollars uh, isn't going to solve the problem, but at least it buys time. I mean, how much time are we talking about, and buy time to do what? Well, uh, the first thing I want to say is uh, that the uh, package indeed buys time. Nobody knows how much time, but it's not necessarily a lot of time. It depends on how confidence in the markets uh, uh, develops. But the, um, I do want to stress that the package is tremendously important, not just in terms of the money and the liquidity it provides, uh, the measures that the European Central Bank has uh, undertaken, but uh, uh, also mm -hmm. because it's the end of every man for himself in the monetary union. Uh, leaders have recognized that uh, uh, monetary union is only as strong as its weakest link. Uh, uh -huh. Therefore, we are going to have more fiscal coordination, more fiscal discipline going forward. I think this is a very meaningful aspect of the, of the decisions. And the other very important aspect of uh, this decision, which has been, I think, a little overlooked, is the very important uh, role that the IMF is expected to play. And mm -hmm. so when and if uh, the other European countries uh, that are vulnerable run into trouble, uh, they will be confronted with uh, very tough uh, IMF-driven conditionality. So this is all a positive aspect of the uh, package, which needs to be recognized up front. Okay, uh, but Uri, you know, a lot of investors are looking at this. In fact, the uh, reaction in the stock markets uh, seems to indicate that investors are not convinced. This looks like a stopgap measure coming from uh, the Eurozone. In fact, uh, you have these bond yields, yeah, okay, slightly uh, narrowing at this point, but then you have these swap spreads and LIBOR not moving so much. If, so if this is a stopgap measure to prevent the closing up of credit markets, it doesn't seem like it's getting it, the job done. And uh, I agree. Um, uh, I think that, I mean, there are, there are two fundamental weaknesses to, uh, to the approach. Uh, the first fundamental weakness is that, uh, in a sense, the market fears that these are unsound governments trying to support other unsound governments. If you calculate what the pledges um, of uh, the various governments in the Eurozone are to the package, it's uh, probably in the vicinity of 6% uh, of GDP. That's without counting any possible losses on the part of the European Central Bank. And these 6% of GDP, at least theoretically, uh, would be paid by Greece and Spain and Portugal, as well as everybody else. The, the point is that the fiscal situation of every government in the Eurozone, just about, is looking uh, dodgy. Um, and so uh, there, there are doubts about uh, the fundamental uh, capacity to carry uh, this kind of package in the longer term. That's uh, one very important weakness. And the second, which is directly related, is that in the end, uh, the package doesn't work because there's just a big amount of money that has been pledged or guaranteed. The package only works if um, uh, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, and so on and so forth, as well as Greece, undertake uh -huh. the very far-reaching changes. And, and so far, the evidence of that is decidedly mixed. I mean, the, okay. the package on Greece, there are clearly big measures there, but, but on the others, it's very mixed. Okay, Uri, so you're saying that it looks like the situation in Europe is unsound governments trying to support unsound governments. If that's the case, what's the viability of the Eurozone? Well, I think, the, I think the Eurozone has a tremendous political commitment behind it, and the $1 trillion package that has just been announced demonstrates that. I, I think nobody should underestimate the um, commitment of political leaders and, I think, a large part of the population uh, to sustain this arrangement, including, uh, I should underline, in, in Greece. Uh, however, this political commitment has to be backed up by far-reaching reforms 
to cut budgets in the vulnerable mm -hmm. countries and also to, um, I mean, if, if you compare, for example, what is happening in a country like Romania, Latvia, Ireland, where uh -huh. uh, uh, government wages are being cut 20 percent, and uh, what is being envisaged at the very margin right now in Spain right. and Portugal and Italy, as far as I see, has committed to nothing for 2010, okay. uh, then yeah. you ask yourself the question, is it really going to happen? Right. So we need to see harsh austerity measures then coming into these uh, economies. Ori, thank you for your time I'm today. Ori so. Dadush. Yeah, who is the uh, former uh, head of uh, international trade at uh, the World Bank.